Guys, how you doing? It's a late night one. This is take two. <laughs> I opened my parcels um, or packages um, and realised I wasn't recording. Like you do. Let's let's progress. Anyhow, um, sat in it, it's a bit nippy tonight. I'm starting to feel it's been a long summer, a long, long summer, I think. Uh, the summer felt like it started in March and we had that bit of a crap patch in July or whenever it was and then took off again up until now and I really feel like it's been to be honest with you I feel like it's, despite being in lockdown I feel like it's been six months of sunshine call me a liar but yeah tonight I've got my gilet on or gillet as my mum would call it Um gilet oh. It's embarrassing, no education, um, or body warmer as I would call it, a bit nippy. Um, yeah, so I've had a couple parcels turn up, and in this parcel is the sequel to a game that I had on my master system that I was absolutely shit at, along with Outrun, and Quartet, and Alien Syndrome. I was The reason you were so good on your master system is because you couldn't afford to get any other games, download yet. You got that game, you ran with that game for the whole month, two months, year, whatever, whatever your budget took you really. Um, <clears throat> and this game is, well, it's the sequel to one of the games we got, and that is Space Area 2. I've never played a Space Area game on a Mega Drive, ever. I've had two or three Mega Drives, I've never played a Space Area. I don't know why, I don't know what happened. It just seemed to be synonymous with the master system and that's where it sort of ended with me that sort of the space harrier age ended with me when you know i remember seeing it in the arcade then watching network seven and this console was coming out and it showed you a clip of space harrier eight bit and i looked at it and i was like that is the arcade that is arcade quality it wasn't it was a bit shit but at the time it was ace so that's, I look forward to playing this because I want to see what it's like. It's Space Area 2, Sega Mega Drive, absolutely top-notch condition, no box. So I look forward to seeing it. I've got a nice little collection of carts without boxes building up on the side there. <clears throat> um, next up, we've got a game that I didn't actually, like, I loved in the arcade and we actually got released, I don't know what... I might have had it on the, is it on the Master System or, I, I can't, it came out on, and it is, I was, I wasn't satisfied. Um, Mr. Dollar Hyde from Manhunter there. <clears throat> when, I, when I got it on the, um, whatever console platform, I wasn't happy with it. The only one I was happy with is Shadow Dancer with the dog, because I thought it was really cool how the dog would attack and it was part of the action. I thought it was really clever, Shadow Dancer. Um, this isn't Shadow Dance right? it's, it's of the same uh, bloodline and it is uh, Revenge of Shinobi. I've seen a few of you playing it, it looked really cool, I thought I've got to get it. Both of these games come to £5 delivered, <coughs> obviously because they've got no car, uh, sleeves but um, this one's not in as good condition, it's perfect for me but it's not as in good condition as the uh, Space Area 2 but that is Revenge of Shinobi. It's got a little uh, cash buyer's sticker on. I have no idea what that means. I'm take this to my eyes can't focus on this time of night. So yeah, chuff for them. Moving on. Uh, bit of a weird one. Yeah, it's just not weird at all, it's just a film. And this film, I, I always remember, um, it's a David Lynch movie. And as most David Lynch movies are, quite shocking, very atmospheric, uh, moody, creepy. And this is up there with all of it, but there's just something so different about this Dennis Hopper, this um, David Lynch movie. I guess the film, he just said the name, Dennis. Um, <clears throat> and I remember my brother, The first, I, I saw this film on VHS and what happened was my, my brother somehow... Uh, we start, start, something happened in the 80s where it was like horror films and violent movies were somehow, oh, 
it's on VHS. Oh, it's all right if the kids can watch it. And it's all right, this sort of... I don't know. If you go around people's houses, I always remember my mate watching, going around the house and... Um, his elder brother had Driller Killer. And we were watching it. And we were, he's like... We were stood outside the window watching it. And then we were sort of going in there. It was like a terrace down. So we were sort of going in. You know, it's like the front door opens and you're straight in the front room. And Driller Killer was on. And we were nipping in and out watching Driller Killer. It was sort of okay. These films were like banned or 18 or really X-rated. And it just, it just makes me laugh. And that sort of mentality, to the point, sorry, the point I'm getting is that mentality sort of bled on into um, my brother renting this and somehow thinking this was like good family entertainment <clears throat> and it, it is to a degree it is to a degree perhaps i'm desensitized but it was so shocking at the time um and there was I'm trying i'm trying to paint a picture here there was me and my mum our dave dave and his missus who's now his wife and um my Auntie Lucy, who lived with us. Now, my Auntie Lucy at the time was in her 80s. And my Auntie Lucy is probably the tiniest person I've ever met in my life, other than somebody who is small. Um, she's tiny. Her and my mum used to work, because my mum's had me quite late. So, my mum had have a house coat on, yeah? Like, fucking Hume in the 1920s, pummeling the door, you know, the doorstep. Uh, soap in the doorstep, whatever you call it. So, house coats on. My Aunt Lucy with a house coat on. A pair of them, like, fucking three foot. And my dad, who was... Uh, had MS and was, like, king, wheel, not wheelchair-bound, not long after one, but he was sort of sat in a chair, vulnerable, not able to get up and go sit having a pit. No, couldn't have an opinion. So it's like... We all sat there, and our Dave had rented this absolute classic movie of, which is Blue Velvet. It sounds like a fucking horse racing film. It is not, it's the most, and the best, what you call it, crime, thriller, drama, horror, action. One of the best movies I've ever seen. Um, and it's all great, it's all great. Up until we meet, I'm sure it's, is it Frank? Okay, his name's Frank. Until we meet, Frank. And I'm not going to say any more than that, but you, you, this film, I remember sitting there, I remember sitting there watching it, like, you know, again, having no idea what this film is, at 16. Uh, me auntie, me fucking 86, 80 odd year old auntie sat next to me. My mum, my dad, and our David and his, we're all sat there, two dogs, two cats, sat in the front room. Ooh, oh, I wonder, I wonder what this is going to be. I was sat there, I just remember my hand creeping up my face, trying to hide with the embarrassment of watching this movie. It was absolutely shocking. Um, and I don't mean shocking like chainsaws, people getting caught. Just the mentality of the film is bizarre. It's a David Lynch movie. It's, it's so good. You know, you're never going to get a bad guy like him. Again, like Dennis Hopper in this film. Absolutely groundbreaking. It's Isabella Rossellini, Dennis Hopper and Carl McLachlan <coughs> um, from June or strip, 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 Strippers or Strip Series. You know, he's not got a... I wouldn't say he's got a massive film history really, but... In this, it is, it's just brilliant. It's just a brilliant movie. You have to see it. You have to see this film because, <clears throat> you know, if you, it's sort of twin, well, it's the Twin Peaks is David Lynch as well. But it's so it's such a mysterious, shocking film. Um, uh, and a, a creepy film. And David Lynch does some weird, weird shit. He gets, you know, he has ideas of scenes. I believe he has ideas of scenes how he wants the scene to look, and then he'll write. I, I might be wrong on this. I believe he writes a film around how that scene looks. It's just the film is just so interesting, and that is Blue Velvet. You know, 
this this that that uh, business with um, renting films out as a family, you know, when you sat there with your mum and dad watching Death Wish Two, it was horrific um, scenes I've ever seen in a movie, and your mum sat there going, "He'll get the bastards because it's Charles Bronson." It's like when. You know, we complain about things now and sensitivity, but there was absolutely zero sensitivity back then. Um, and another film which was, I think me and my mum drew, you know, it was a straw that brought the camels back, was, you know, me, mum, Auntie Lucy, John, Dave, you know, you know, whole family there. Ooh, let's watch Straw Dogs. You know, who in the right fucking mind would think that was acceptable viewing uh, for a family. Um, our kid would, you know, we sat there, I'd never, you know, I don't know if you've seen Straw Dogs, it's got some absolutely horrendous scenes in it. One in particular, which is the selling point of the film really, my mum turned around, I just remember her going, uh, um, I think it's time you went to bed. And I, I've got, I, was, I was sat there, you know, hiding behind a pillow and I thought, yeah, thank fuck for that. But yeah, so there's my pickup, guys. Um, but yeah, a really good film, Blue Velvet. This is in immaculate condition, immaculate. It's a DVD. I know you're like, oh, the two a penny, but it's quite hard to get your hands on something indecent Nick, nowadays. Um, I would like it in VHS, but I'm never gonna. It's not a film I'd watch in my shed, to be honest with you. Uh, I'd watch it in. Uh, I'd watch it in the house because. I, I really want to sit back and hide. Um, no, it's a film I'm probably watching the house on a on a better TV than than what I've got out here for now. For now, that is, I'll probably get a better TV out here. But yeah, um, that's Blue Velvet. Really, I can't can't push it. I know I always say, oh, I can't push this one up, but I won't be saying it if I didn't mean it. These are films that I know you'll like, and I know you may find a bit bizarre, but you'll find them very, very, very entertaining. So I'm going to wrap up guys, thanks for joining, joining me, thanks for dropping by Mike's shed and I hope to see you guys soon. Take care, good night.